Hello friends. So we are back with uh, our friend, our great uh, father of English rhetoric theory or criticism, that is Sir Philip Sibley. So last class we saw that uh, this this is poor point. <laughs> we have to defend it. So that like uh, Milton expresses his helplessness. He has no other way but to write analogy at that time, although he was not matured enough. So he says, so this sad vocation dear, was constrained. Because why? Because he is a scorned skill, poetry is a scorned skill. Poetry which is among us is thrown down to such a ridiculous estimation. Poetry has been made an object of ridiculous estimation, so we have to defend. And these are the first defense is, this is the first light given to our darkness. Thomas Soma Jodhir Gimya. And then secondly we saw that it is the nurse that gives you, feeds you milk, sweet milk. That also we saw. And, and then we saw any civilized nation. The first books were books of poetry. Take any civilized nation, Rome, Greece, Turkey, Ireland, Switzerland, any land you can see. The first book. And also we saw philosophers. See, they put on the mask of a poet to attract the people. Or in Plato, Plato's uh, philosophy is nothing but poetry, he says. Written in, written in the poetic style. Otherwise, people will reject it, according to uh, Sir Philip Sidney. So, today we have uh, further defense. He speaks about historiographers. Historiographers. Historiographers means historians. The most famous one is Herodotus. You know? Herodotus. Herodotus. The Greek historian. Now what happens is that he, historians usually are concerned more about verity. Verity means truthfulness. But what they did was they, they used the poetic, poet, poetic style. For example, if express their passions, to give particularities of battles, long orations of kings and captains, they had to use poetry. So even in, a, in, in even among the historians who are more concerned about truth than the style and beauty and so on, aesthetic beauty, they are using poetry, passions, particularities of battles, and then you know, this long oration speeches of. As you can see in the Mark Antony's speech in in uh, uh, Julius Caesar. Yes, that's a drama, but probably historians also must have put those words in the mouth of Mark Antony. Long orations, friends, Romans, countrymen, things like that. And also kings so addressing the public, yeah, passions and so on. So then you see, then you see uh, historians and philosophers, historiographers and philosophers, if they had to enter into the public arena, where the public makes judge, judgments about them. Whether, they, whether if they had to be accepted by the public, they had to take the passport of poetry, in order to a passport of poetry. That is the words used by Sir Philip Sidney. A historian to become popular, he has to become poetic. A philosopher to become popular, he has to become poetic. Otherwise, you cannot. Because pleasure is very important. Pleasure. Without, if nothing gives pleasure, if something does not give pleasure, who is so interested in that? Then we have seen in countries in, like in Turkey, I have already told you, Turkey, then you have got Ireland, India, our own India, you see, the Vedas were written in poetic style, poetry. We have got the great song of the Lord. What is that? Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan's song. Gita means, Gita means song. 
So Bhagavad Gita is the song of the Lord. That is, that is the thing. And then you see, anyone to enter into the hardship of knowledge, the hard learning process, first they have to soften your mind. Isn't it? Make it soft. Only then you can plant new things in his mind. For that, first you should go through, first you should read poems, simple poems, like they even start with the nursery rhymes. Understand? So, this is what the people say. And in Wales, that is where the Celtic people live, Wales, the original Celts, the original inhabitants of England, they call their poets bards. They call their poets bards. Shakespeare, you know? Bard is a bard. Shakespeare is a bard. See that? And there, there are a number of invasions, you know, in, uh, in, like Roman invasions. Then you had Saxon invasions. After that, Danish invasion, Norman. Norman conquest of England. Then Romans, twice or thrice, they invaded England. The Normans came. Not Romans, but Normans, Duke of Normandy, remember? After all this, what happens is the poet and poetic tradition, the tradition of the bard going around and singing, that remain. That means how deep rooted is the tradition of poets in England. So that is what Sydney says. So one after one, two, three, four, five, you can say like this. Then, as I already told you in the introduction, that is, Romans called them Vatis. What this means divinish, or seers, or prophets, what high standard was it? So then, there was a superstition among people. Now also you will find. Some people, they open holy books, and whatever the, the first, they think that that will happen to them. They understand that. Like this, those days, Virgil, Virgil said it, sudden opening. That's a, that, what, what do you call that? Huh? Sortus Vigiliane. That is called Sortus Virgili, Virgiliana, sorry, Virgiliana. That means sudden opening of Virgil's book. Sudden opening. This is a superstition. Sudden opening of Virgil's book in it. And then you see, you read a sentence, you know, or a line, then close it. And you meditate over that, and you think that you will become, you will become that. So, for example, in this case, he gives an example of albinus. He gives example of albinus, albinus, who became the governor of England after some time. So there, when he was young, when albinus was young, he. Sortus Virgiliane. Sortus Virgiliane means, means opening in it suddenly and then first what attracts you first, the line that attracts you first, you think that it has a psychological effect on you. See that is so that means love of poetry showing the importance of poetry. What did he see? What did he read? Do you know? He read like this. Almo Amens. Almo. That is Latin, eh? Uh, Almo Amens. He, he wrote like that. He read like this. Almo Amens Corpio, Carpio, sorry, not Corpio, Carpio, Neck. Neck. Neck means no. Sat Rationis in Armis. Sat Rationis. Asionis in Armis. So this is the line that he Armis. Albinus, who became the governor of England when he became a young man, when he was a young man. As a boy, probably he might have opened it. Then he read it like this: Armo Armens Carpio, Nec Sat Rasionis in Armis. What is the meaning, you know? When I am in frenzy, I will take arms. Otherwise, 
there is no reason for taking arms. You can see many of these words are non deal. Armo, armo means arms. Armo armens. Carpio. Carpio means carpe diem conceit. You know, in uh, Andrew Marvel's poem, uh, to his coy mistress. So carpe diem means catch the day, seize the day. So armo carpio means catch or take arms. Next up, no other reason. Neck means no, no other reason, but rationalist means rational reason. Next start, rationalist. No other reason in arms to take arms, arms. That is, there is only when I am angry, frenzy, only when I am angry, I will take arms. Otherwise, I will not take arms. This is what he read. Uh, Albinus read, Albinus who later became governor of England read. And it happened in his life like that. He became a governor. He had to take arms. And that is justified. Because if you are angry at something, you take arms. Otherwise, there is no need of taking arms. So most of the words I can connect. Armo means, armo means arms. Rationalist means rational reason. In armies means in hand. Then next up means Neck now, nothing but. That's the meaning. So the style is said that the many words, and you explain that even. Exact words, word by word translation is not possible here because this is highly stylish poetry. Understand? It's very highly packed. This is one of the one of the points that one of the reasons why we are attracted to poetry. Because the words are packed. If you take one the whole thing is lost. So in this case, Arma in the ablative case, dative case, ablative has got different meanings and so on. These things we need not enter into this, but remember this. So the, the translation is like this. I, I will take arms, I will take arms only when I am angry. Friends seriously, angry. There is no other reason. Neck rationalist. There is no other reason. So that is what he says. There is no other reason for taking arms unless you are you are angry. That is the thing. So that is called the sortus virgiliane. Sortus virgil. Virgil. Virgiliane means off virgil. Off virgil. Sortus sudden opening. Sudden opening and finding the words. Sometimes people do with the holy books, Bible and uh, other religious books when they see that when they read when you read Bhagavad Gita you open Bhagavad Gita suddenly and then you find that uh, Thomas or uh, no, that is uh, Nishkama Dharma or something like that ah then you ah, yes. so this is what I should do this is my mission in life some people are like that okay then poetry says so that is it says uh, Sidney himself says it is a godless superstition but still people are doing it why because they have got that uh, they are attracted to his poetry. So defense of poetry, what are we doing? We are defending poetry. Apology for poetry. And then what happens, you know, you are in the body called, you have got a, say it is said that you can command spirits by using words. Just got that much power. If you want, you have, have you seen any spirit anywhere except myself? Yes, nobody. So then uh, you can command spirits. Because Spirits, they are confused when you utter in a words or when you, when you utter lines of a poetry. Line words, you no, know, versification. If you do that towards a spirit, then the spirit will run away. They can, or you can command them to go away or to come. Listen, probably Dr. First might have commanded Mephistopheles to come to his study room by using words. So he had to come. There's no other way out. Understand? You command. Why? Because the words are measured. Isn't it? Measured and fixed. For example, if I say, there are many uh, things in this world, all the things that are beautiful are beautiful. People say it is beautiful and so on. But a line like this, if you say, a thing of beauty is a joy for her. 
You cannot remove even take even one word from that. One word means taken means all the lines are gone. Frailty, thy name is woman, Shakespeare. Which one you can take away from that? If you take one word from that, the line, then the line collapses. It's no meaning. But from prose, you can take any number of ways. From position, you can drop such things can be done. This is so then oracles of Delphi, that's delivered in words. Sibylla's prophecy, Sibylla. You remember this is Sibylla. Sibyl, what do you want? So Titelis, Sibylla, Titelis. Apotanin Talo. Apotanin Talo means I want to die. Apotanin doesn't mean lie, I die. Apotanin means separation. So eternal separation is that. When the children asked her, what do you want? Then she said, I want separation from this world. That is that. Teleo means end. end. So that is poet. Sibyls, they speak in, in, in poetry. They use poetry. Understand? Poetic lines they use. Oracle says, what about David? Psalms of David, famous Psalms of David. So all the poets, poets, beautiful Hebrew poetry, sounds in its original form, beautiful Hebrew poetry. Listen to that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That is Psalm 23, that is English. But if you know how to read uh, the Hebrew version of that psalm, it is so beautiful. Even in English it is beautiful. Right? So, David says, Holy David Psalms were written in poetry. So, he is defending the poetry. Listen. Prosopopeias. There is a thing of prosopopeias. Prosopo. 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 Oh, sorry. Prosopopeias. Prosopopeias. In Psalms you will find this. Prosopopeias. That's called a simple personification. I am just using this word because this has been used by our great critic. This subject is So there is personifications. In the Psalms you will find God walking down. Andropo. Andropo. Anthropomorphic God. What is anthropomorphic? Anthropology, you know. Anthropomorphic God. What is that? Anthropos means man. Morph means shape. So God appears in the form of a man in the Bible, sorry, in the Psalms. Only poets can do that. Then hills, uh, sorry, the beasts and the animals and the birds singing in jubilation. Poetic. Hills leaping out with joy. Poetic. Great poetry. Who can resist the attractions of poetry? Asks our great critic. First Renaissance critic, the first poet critic who started this tradition of poet critics in English literature. Who can resist the, the, it's irresistible. The attractions of poetry are irresistible. For example, we say, think of philosophers, think of historians, think of Captains and kings, think of long orations, think of all the particularities of battle. You remember the beginning of Macbeth, the, the soldier comes and narrates the whole thing. So, so, so vividly, so his poetry can do that. Then he said about nations. You say in India, Bhagavad Gita, yes. And then you have got also 
In Wales, they call the poets bards. In Rome, they call the poets vatus, that is, uh, a diviners. Then there's a poet, books of poetry, like uh, Virgil in it. Isn't it? A sudden opening, Virgiliani, Virgiliani, Sotus Virgiliani. Even people like uh, governors, when they were young, they used to do this and they used to believe that it happens. See that? So it's all poetry. Oracles in poetry, delivered in poetry. Sibylla's prophecies, delivered in poetry. But in spirits you can command. You can command spirits. And then you see, you can also see the great psalms of Holy David. That you have a personification of prosopopias. Prosopopias. That is uh, personifications. Hills jumping out in jubilation and singing and dancing of animals and birds and the entire created world. These are described in poetry. So what a wonderful thing is poetry. So irresistible. How, so how can you say this is the spawn script? How can you say people are holding it in only sick people can do? As I told you right at the very beginning, you know, in my the first class we saw, just for the sake of displacing something for getting praise. Some people are like that, you know. Right? So they are negatively loaded, their brain, that's why. So thus he continues to defend poetry. This defense should be read by you uh, should read, it's classic. It's a classic. And you get law, and not only this about poetry, but law, many other branches of knowledge. You get, you get very, very authoritative knowledge. Understand? Therefore, I appeal to you: you read the original text. Don't be satisfied with what I am saying. This is second hand. Read the original text. Okay? Bye. Have a nice day.